Okay, so in this video here, we're going to apply some very basic math to figure out the minimum amount of credit you should be receiving when selling options. So that's going to apply to option selling strategies like credit spreads, iron condors, naked puts or cash secured puts, strangles, straddles, all that good stuff. And this really is going to be a very important video because of course, depending on how much you're selling your options for, that's going to dictate your monthly and annual returns. So naturally, you should be trying to sell options for the highest price possible while still maintaining a decent probability of profit. So again, this video here is going to focus on the minimum amount of credit you should be collecting when selling options. Now, as always, before we get started here, in case you are brand new to the channel, my name is Scott Rees, and I'm here to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in case you want to see more trading or investing content after watching this video, you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. Okay, so now we can get started here. And so I'm gonna be breaking down the calculations to figure out, again, the minimum credit you should be shooting for into three simple steps. And so step number one is you need to figure out your goal annual return for these option selling strategies that you're using. And it is very important here to be realistic about this goal. So don't try and shoot for a 100 or 200% return in a year. I'm not saying that's impossible, but it is super, super unlikely. And from my perspective, generally speaking, I do think shooting for an annual return of anywhere between 20 to 30% is a pretty realistic number. And for me personally, I try to shoot for at least a 25% annual return. And so then once you have identified this goal percentage, you now need to convert it into a dollar amount based on your current account size. So for example, I trade with about a $50,000 account. And if I'm shooting for a 25% return, that means I'm trying to make about $12,500 in one year. And again, that is the minimum amount I'm shooting for. And now once you have figured out your target annual return in terms of a dollar amount, you have completed step one. And so now step two is based on that target profit. You must calculate the required monthly premium you must collect. And the reason why I'm converting this into a monthly time frame is because we basically need to figure out how much to collect for each expiration cycle. And for me personally, I typically trade the monthly expiration cycles, but if you prefer to trade the weeklies, then you can also convert this number into a weekly time frame instead of a monthly time frame. And so now what you need to do here is take your annual target profit and simply divide it by 12. Or again, in the case, if you prefer to trade weekly expiration cycles, divide that number by 52. So for example, if I'm trying to shoot for an annual profit of around 12,500 bucks at minimum, then taking that number and dividing by 12, that gives me a monthly profit target of $1,041.67. But this number is still not yet the required premium I must collect on a monthly basis. And that's because for every trade that I make, I have a specific and consistent profit target that I'm shooting for. And for me, that profit target is always 50% of the total credit collected. So for instance, if I sell a put option for, let's say 200 bucks, then my profit target is trying to make 50% of that credit, which is $100. Now, of course, in order to complete this step, you must have a profit target in mind. So if you don't have one yet, you must figure that out. And I personally recommend shooting for at least 50% of the total credit you collect, but you can go for more than that, 75%, 80, 90, or even 100% if you wanna hold your trades all the way to the expiration date. And there really is no right or wrong answer to this. It's mostly a personal preference, but the most important thing here is whatever profit target you do decide on, be consistent with it. So if you choose 75% as your profit target, then every trade you make, take your profits at 75% of the total credit you receive. So then based on that number, the last component of step two is to take your monthly profit goal and divide it by your per trade profit target in terms of a decimal. So for example, my per month profit target is $1,041.67. I would divide that by 0.5 because again, I always take my profits at 50% of the total credit I receive on every trade. So now that means every month or every expiration cycle, I must collect at least $2,083.33. That is my required minimum monthly premium. And again, if you sell weeklies, that would be your required minimum weekly premium. Okay, so now once you've figured out your required minimum monthly or weekly premium, that brings you to step three, 
which is based on that number to calculate your required premium or credit on a per trade basis. And of course, that is the main question we're trying to answer in the first place. And so in order to complete this step, you must figure out two things. The first of which is you must identify your average risk per trade as a percentage based on your full account value. So for example, me personally, I typically allocate around 5% of my account value for each trade that I make. So 5% of $50,000, that's 2,500 bucks. That is the amount of capital I'm willing to put up when entering a new trade. And again, if you don't have that number in mind yourself yet, then you do have to figure that out. So ask yourself, how much capital are you willing to put up for each trade that you're making? Is it 5% like myself? Is it 10%? Whatever you decide, stick with it and be consistent. And so now the second thing you must figure out or identify is your average total portfolio allocation for all the trades that you have on simultaneously. And again, for me personally, as an example, I typically allocate around 30% of my total capital for all the trades that I have on simultaneously. Now that is also just for the actual option positions themselves. I will use more capital than that to hedge my positions using stock if I need to, but that is irrelevant for these calculations here. And 30% is simply my number. That's what I'm comfortable with. But if you are more risk averse than myself, then you can allocate less of your portfolio. And if you are less risk averse, you can definitely allocate more of your portfolio for more trades. But regardless, whatever you do decide, I would not go over maybe 60% of your portfolio being allocated at one point in time. And so now once you have identified your average risk per trade and your average portfolio allocation, simply take your portfolio allocation and divide it by your average risk per trade. So for me, as an example, 30% portfolio allocation divided by 5% risk per trade equals six maximum trades I can have on simultaneously. And so then finally, the last component of step three is to take your minimum required monthly or weekly premium and divide it by the maximum number of simultaneous trades you can have on. So for me, my minimum monthly required premium is $2,083.33. Divide that by six maximum trades I can have on at once, and that equals $347.22 per trade. That is the absolute minimum amount of credit I must collect for each trade that I'm making. Now, finally, in this video, I do want to discuss a few things you must keep in mind about all these calculations here. The first of which is, again, I want to reiterate, this is the absolute minimum amount of credit you must collect for each trade because, of course, at some point, you're going to have losses. You're not going to win on every single trade, right? So therefore, you must collect as much additional credit over this number to help compensate for those occasional losses. And then of course, alongside that, you must also make sure you have good trading defense to keep your losses small and manageable. You can't afford to have one, two or three trades just blow up your entire account. And then number two here, the reason why we're looking at the max number of trades you can have on at once is because there might be times where you have to hold those trades all the way to expiration to meet your profit target or to make any profit at all. But that being said, there will certainly be months or weeks where you don't actually have to hold all your trades to expiration. Some of those trades will hit your profit target well before then. So you can take your profits there and then reload and place new trades to collect even more additional credit. And so the main idea here is those extra trades that will happen, I would say pretty frequently, those combined with the additional credit you can collect over the minimum amount for all your trades, those things together should outweigh the losses you will face from time to time. And therefore, this should allow your portfolio to grow on average based on the amount of credit you're collecting initially for each month or for each week. And I do wanna emphasize here on average, some months you might just have more losses than usual, which will cause your profits to be much smaller or perhaps even negative for that month. And then other months, you might have very few losses and your profits will therefore be much larger than usual. So on average, your account should still be steadily growing over time. And so with that being said, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.